um, something that works really well on eBay, but not a lot of people want to go that route. So let me know in the chat below if you guys can hear us okay. Um, mm -hmm. And I apologize for um, maybe the last couple of days I was going to make some more content, but I actually injured my foot, so I don't know what happened. I either have gout or plan plantar fasciitis. I can't pronounce that. Whatever that is, I have one of those two things. Mm -hmm. And I think it's from prolonged standing on concrete, but I don't know. So. I want to talk today about the model on eBay that works really well, but a lot of people don't really want to do it, and that's sort of high volume, high margin, low average sale price items. So you hear all the time people will say, oh, I don't sell things unless I make 10 times my money, or five times my money, or 100 times my money, and um, sounds okay? Okay. Um, <laughs> Thank you. And it really depends on how expensive the item is. It's pretty easy to turn $1 into 10, um, but very difficult, in my opinion, to turn a hundred into a thousand, right? You're not going to find too many of those types of deals. Um, yeah. So that's the main key with eBay. So essentially, if you pick one dollar in the ten, um, that's awesome. But then you have to learn how to list really quickly. So this week on the mastermind call, it's not live on YouTube. I'm doing it privately so I can watch people list. And it's been really enlightening watching people. This morning, we had Arwen and Amber, and we watched Arwen, essentially it was taking him about 40 seconds to take the photos, right? So he had a sequence where his shoes, 11 pictures, 40 seconds on average. Also, Christine, not my wife. She's our <laughs> videographer. Uh, hello. So 40 <laughs> seconds morning. for the photo part, and then the listing part took him three to four minutes. And that's the researching, writing the title, adding the photos in. So one minute plus three to four minutes is around four to five minutes per item, which is, in my opinion, is fast enough. Anything under six minutes, I would consider fast enough because you can knock out 10 listings in an hour and you can do really well with that. Um, let's see. Mm -hmm. Great. Mm -hmm. Oh, oh, acupuncture. Oh, acupuncture. Maybe I will try that. I'll try anything because that was like <laughs> some of the worst pain I've ever had. Mm. So I that had was... plantar fasciitis too. You had it? I had to put mm, different types of insoles in Man, my Man, that was super painful. Yeah. So I'm also a little bit worried about the workers here. I want to make sure that everybody has the right footwear and we're doing what we can because it's debilitating. It sucks. Mm. Mm -hmm. It's like something to do with your arch. I mm -hmm. don't know, but... So it, it feels like you're... Like there's something happening when Yeah, you're, it was horrible. Yeah. We so, should put rubber mats in the back then. Yeah, we'll put rubber mats in the back. Yeah. Okay, so we were comparing um, Arwen, who took about four to five minutes, with Amber. And um, <laughs> Amber's setup, basically, the transferring of the photos is a little bit difficult for her. Sometimes it created duplicates. Sometimes it wouldn't transfer at all. Sometimes it took a long time to transfer the photos over. So right there, she already spent more than four or five minutes just transferring the photos from her phone to her computer, which that's all, she's already losing a little bit there. When she was taking her photos, sometimes um, she used a sticker. She took the picture of the brand on the platform. Sometimes she took it on the table. All these little changes or things that you do one time and not the other time really take a long time. There was a question yep. up here. Um, Gayla says, a buyer requested a refund because she said item was torn, sent photo to me and it was obvious it was cut with scissors. It was a brand new item with tags and thoroughly checked. What do you nope. do with that? No worries. Just accept the return mm. and get the item back. So, um, but now it's cut. <laughs> it's cut. And uh, you are, if you offer free returns, you have the ability to issue up to a 50% refund. So if the item was $100, um, issue them a $50 refund, let eBay know. The reason is because the item was not in the same condition. Um, you can't withhold the entire amount. The maximum refund you can give is 50%. Okay, yeah, they're asking if they can give a partial refund instead of full. You can. You can give up to a 50% refund if you have free returns. Mm -hmm. Ashley says, if you have only replenishable items, how do you have a daily goal? Is it just editing existing listings or is it ending and sell similar? Thanks for your advice. Is it Ashley? Yeah, or, yeah, Ashley. Ashley, what's up, or Ashley. Um, so, if you have replenishable uh, items, it's still, Im <laughs> it's still important to do daily listings, but it's a little bit different. So, I will look at the store Western Boots. Um, Western Boots has only around, I would say, 30 different SKUs. Um, and what they're doing is they are adjusting the SKUs so that they're a little bit different. So, for example, let's say they're style A, B, C, D, E. 
They might list one listing with A, B, C, D, and E, all the variations. They might list an A and B, A and C, A and D, A and E, E and A. They're going to make all the different variations of those items in stock. Now, according to eBay policy, it's against the policy to list one item in two different listings. Mm -hmm. So the way around that is if you have 10, list, 10 of one item, list five on one listing and five on the other listing. So you're not listing the exact same thing and a different combination will result in different search traffic. So with replenishables, you essentially want to rank to the top in every single category or search term that you're looking for. So what I would do is once you've optimized, that listing is great. What you're now trying to do is get more vertical real estate. So you're trying to show up again under that search. So you would do that over and over again um, until you get around 50 or 60 listings, in my opinion, that are fully optimized for that category. And then at that point, you don't necessarily need to list every day because you already own that search term, um, which is when you're selling one-off items, when you sell an item, it's gone. So you have to start over again to get it back up. But on a replenishable item, I know replenishable sellers who haven't changed their listing for five, six years, their original one, but then their daily listing variations of it to get more vertical real estate. And then the super advanced version of that is you do that on multiple accounts. So I helped one seller get 80% of the sales in one category with three different accounts, three different locations, three different warehouses, three different eBay stores, different listings on all of them. So no matter what listing you picked, it'd be different pictures, different titles, different price. It was all him. He basically was getting all the sales, but you didn't, you wouldn't know. There's a question um, from Nelda it says, is eBay a good way for a church to raise money? Yes. Um, essentially what you need is when you're running a charity and there needs to be a cause. Um, so for example, um, the church is the cause. So that makes it easier. All proceeds will go to the church. That's fantastic. You can apply as a charity um, on eBay and they will basically discount your fees to whatever percentage you want to give to the charity. So if it's a hundred percent charity, eBay, I believe, doesn't charge any fees. They might charge a, a processing fee or something, but I'm assuming they take the fees out and the rest you get um, as a, a charity seller, they'll deduct a percentage. It's a great way to do it. Um, if you have it, the, you want to should we move this? <laughs> Cars come in. <laughs> um, yeah, it's a great way to run um, a charity because people can just give you things and you can do a percentage of it for the, the cause. Oh, their church burned and we're able to save a lot of glassware though. That's cool. Not cool that the church burned down, but <laughs> right. cool that you're able to raise some funds. Uh, so, everyone that's here, smash the like button. Appreciate you guys. Alabama Flip says, swapping the SD card from a real camera to the desktop has been a huge time saver. Highly recommend. Yes. So um, we're going to be doing every single Friday now, two hours of hand, um, two hours of hand holding, helping people do it from start to finish, everything. Um, in the group live so we can watch you do it. And I recommend getting a simple point and shoot camera. So mm -hmm. you can click on my link, bit.ly slash resource supplies and get the camera that I recommend, which is the Canon Elf 180. It's getting more and more and more expensive because it's so easy to use, but any point and shoot where you take the memory card out and plug it in, uh, that's gonna be the easiest. Mm -hmm. um, Elio says, if I list 15 a day, then I throw up 40 extra listings a day a week. Does that help boost the traffic? It does for that one day, but um, we're not in business for one day or one week. We're in business forever. So doing that one time does not matter. In the long scheme of things, people always say, oh, I want to go crazy this weekend. Go crazy this weekend, but just go back to your regular habit. Mm -hmm. It's not about what you do one time. It's like, for example, every day you go for a mile run and one day you run a marathon. It doesn't affect your overall condition. It can actually hurt you because if you list all those items, sometimes people are sloppy or they don't do a good job and it ends up letting eBay know when this person does list a lot of items, they don't do a good job. So I would rather you just spread out those items longer. Mm -hmm. um, there is a question saying, I sell sports cards on eBay. Any specific tips for sports cards? Yes. So sports cards is challenging because Every single model works. Uh, whether you do only graded, whether you do only singles, whether you do only lots, whether you do only sealed packs, every single model works. So from my experience, if you're a card seller, just do one um, and then figure out how to monetize all the other different ways that you get cards in. 
Um, but it's very difficult for card sellers to do a little bit of everything. Mm -hmm. I feel like those sellers all fail. Um, I was just following a seller named Mintley Collects, and he sells basically all singles, right? So he buys lots, sells all singles. He's done really, really well just focusing on one thing. Or there's another gentleman in the group who's like a top 100 seller on, um, on Amazon. So he does 30 to $50 million a year on Amazon. And on eBay, he has an average sale price of $2,000. He only sells the rarest, most ridiculous graded cards ever. And he does breaking. So he essentially breaks all the cards himself, not on a stream or anything, just opens all the boxes himself, grades the most ridiculous stuff, and then sends the rest of it to another person that sells all of it. So he focuses only on super high end graded, um, like $2,000 plus per card. It doesn't do anything else. So all singles and the graded, I've seen two people be very successful. And I also know hundreds or thousands of card sellers that struggle doing everything. Um, Blue Eyes Thrift Girl says, if you had 8,000 8, square feet of stuff, mainly clothes, but the cost every month is like 3,000, how would you get out of that situation? Um, <laughs> Facebook Marketplace. Facebook Marketplace put up an ad, say I have cheap clothing. Um, the cheaper the clothing, the faster it will sell. Sylvia says, hi Chris, on eBay we need weight. Oh. We need weight the clothes, or do, or they do automatic. Okay, <laughs> so I understand the question. Okay. <laughs> um, you don't need to weigh your clothes beforehand. I, Sorry, I just okay. separate first class and priority, um, but you don't need to weigh it beforehand. There's mm -hmm. no reason to do that. Will there be more mastermind to watch? No, we're not doing any more master. Uh, on Wednesday morning, I think what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna do a mastermind call and I'm gonna have Christine edit it because mm. I don't uh, it's like I we already have this live right now where you guys can ask questions every single Monday and on Wednesday I don't know if that's a good thing because I can't answer any of the questions because Wednesday I'm running the call so I can't answer any of the questions at the same time so I'm thinking on, on Monday I answer as many questions as I can live Q&A so if you guys can help me out with a like that helps because these videos don't do very well so I want to just get the best I want to, I'm here to answer questions because they don't do very well. And on Wednesday, I can't answer any questions, so I probably won't post the mastermind anymore. It has to be in the Patreon group. I'm thinking on Wednesday, though, we do a seller spotlight, ask somebody some questions, and then maybe Christine can help me edit it into something a little more useful for you guys. Mm -hmm. um, Oliver is asking, how did you do on the WhatNot auction on Friday? He didn't catch it. Um, the first time I did the WhatNot stream, I did 35000 The second time, last Friday, I did 26000 The uh, um, combined shipping thing really affected me, and I need to adjust the way I do it. So I think that I should be able to do 20000 every single week on Friday by myself. That stream's a little bit different than my other, my other workers because it's, it's just a different setup. So um, I'm thinking definitely I want to go every Friday myself, but I'm working on adjusting. Um, and this week I have a few lots coming in from YouTube audience members. I want a minimum of 500 items and a $20 average sale price. Um, and that's, that's eBay, that's any website. So minimum $10,000 worth of stuff coming in. I wanna do 50-50 split. So you find the stuff, send it to me. We'll see how well it does. It would work better the higher your ASP, um, but $20 minimum ASP on average. If I get your box and it's all low end stuff, I'm not gonna list it. Sylvia is asking, eBay always takes 0.1 and more little bit all the time, what this means. What does um, this so mean? that's, she, I think she's asking about 10 cents. This is the insertion fee. So eBay is going to charge you between 10 cents and 50 cents per listing. Um, and that's just, that's what you pay to get the item on, on eBay, unless you have a store subscription. Ben saying, you've mentioned Grailed on your channel before for high-end mm. clothing. I tried to list a pair of jeans and my account was immediately frozen. Is proof of purchase required for all listings? Yes, for most, most websites, they want a tagged photo. Um, grailed, you know, like if you, if you just show up and list one pair of high-end jeans, I would suspend you too because they don't know you. That's like exactly what a scammer would do. So don't be a scammer. You get to get your weight up slowly. Start with listing a normal thing and then slowly build up. But like. That's like you showing up at the party with five brand new PlayStations. That's highly suspicious. Mm -hmm. So you wanna take your time. If you wanna list high-end items, you need a reputation first. 
Aaron says, after doing eBay for so long, have you noticed that certain times of the year are busier than others? If so, which times would you say are the best during the year? You want to list all year long, but the best times are going to be October, November, December, um, January through April uh, for tax time or tax refund time. Um, I would say depending on your category, back to school can be really busy. And if you are smart, you'll do essentially You'll do Spirit Halloween hardcore for October to sell um, you know, Halloween costumes and then during the summer you'll sell shorts and sandals. If you don't like having variable income, you will pick items that are less seasonal. Um, one example of that is t-shirts, is the only clothing category that is not seasonal. So if you sell t-shirts year round, you'll have sales all year round. Um, there's no fluctuation in sales. Mm. How do you work out how much profit is needed per item minimum to achieve a desired income and cost of goods for the next month? Who is that? They said ignore their name. Oh, ignore their name. <laughs> so I appreciate that question because it depends on your own personal preference. If you want to make $100 per item, that's very different, right? So that's why, I think Christine and I made this video. The questions mm -hmm. that you need to ask yourself are, how much money do you want to make per item? How many items do you want to list per week? So with those two, item numbers we can build you a plan like if you only want hundred dollar items and you only and you want to sell a hundred items per week then essentially a hundred items per week with our system is only going to take you um, five to ten hours the list so it's going to take you 35 hours of shopping essentially to find that kind of profit per item um, if you're looking for a lower end item you won't have to spend as much time sourcing so it depends on how much you want to make per item, how many items you want to sell, that's how we would build the plan. Cost of goods depends on what you're willing to um, spend in order to make the money you're looking for. For me personally, I'm okay spending 100 to make 10. Lisa says, what about drop shipping? I'm not a fan of drop shipping because you can't control the other, the third party that you're drop shipping from. So it's okay, um, but most people make uh, it just depends on your scenario. I'm going to be doing more drop shipping content because there's a lot of people who listen to my channel outside of the United States or they have zero money and they're not willing, they're not willing to go sourcing or they can't go sourcing. Um, drop shipping is like not my favorite. Aaron says, question, I'm limited to 250 listings or 4,500 a month. I've reached my listing limits. Should I get a small store to upgrade my number of listings? Sales are about four to five a week. No, upgrading to a store will not increase your seller limit. We should move over here for a second. Yeah. Just switch it up. Um, go on to this one. We're gonna go into here. <laughs> Maybe this is a... Okay. Yeah, so um, getting a small store will not actually affect your... Um, listing limit? Your listing amount that eBay gives you. Mm. What I would do is make sure that you're top rated seller. And if you're top rated seller, you ship things in one day or less, no problems, no defects, they should just increase your limit. The train did come by, but I'm sure another train will come. <laughs> um, Jennifer says, do you sell kids clothes, Ralph Lauren, not a bull? No, uh, I think kids clothes are a waste of time unless you do bundles. And now that I have a kid, um, kids clothing is ridiculously cheap. There are those baby consignment kid shops, I would go to those places and get a couple bucks for your items. Mm -hmm. It's not really worth it because your, your time is so valuable. Listing items that are like five, six, two, five dollars, unless you have really bougie kids that you spend $500 on their clothing, it's not worth it to resell in, in my experience. But mm -hmm. it depends again on how bougie your kids are. Moneybags says, you're my idol, Chris. Can I get a shout out? <laughs> What's up, Money is Moneybags? Moneybags. Moneybags, that's a good username. <laughs> uh, shout out the money bags. Appreciate you. Um, Dollar Signs says, "What's good? Thanks for everything. How can I upload extra photos on eBay? Some of my vintage items have a few imperfections, and I like to upload photos of all. Any tips? Thanks." Yeah, so I recommend all twelve photos if you can on eBay. Mm -hmm. So just take a picture of every single defect, every single angle, every single close up that you want, so people can really get a good idea um, of what you're listing. Mm -hmm. Jennifer says, what's the best way to contact you? Best way to contact me is chris at dailyrefinement.com. I do get like three to 500 emails a day. So it's, it, if I don't respond to you, it's not because I'm being mean. I just don't have time. I'll try my best. But even at this point, I can't really even answer YouTube comments. There's too much stuff going on. Um, so 
I can only limit my time to mentoring people in the mentorship group. Um, and we have a bi-weekly more intimate call. But like yesterday, somebody offered me $2,000 for two hours and I declined. Mm. I'd rather just spend time with my family than help somebody get started. So essentially the best way to do this is to figure out how many items you want to list, how much money you want to make your schedule, and then post that in the group. And you can have 2,000 people help you instead of just me giving you advice. Mm -hmm. um, I can, I'll do the best I can, but it's really hard for me to answer one by one questions, especially since the channel has been growing. And my channel is mainly focused on how to make a living. So, okay, I kind of, I figured it out. <laughs> so there's two kinds of YouTube channels, okay? There's one that's how to make a killing, right? So how to find something for a dollar and sell for 500 or 5,000 or 10,000. Uh, mine's more about how to make a living. So how to make a killing, how to make a living, right? So over time, I end up making a killing, but not, per item, I don't care. Mm. I sell something for $5,000, that's only happening one time, versus I set up a business, it makes $5,000 a week forever. I'd rather do that. Um, I don't care about the one-off home runs. I, I see that stuff all the time. Mm -hmm. Darren says, where is the best place to source if you don't have the time to shop and have no real knowledge on the best items inside of brands? You're screwed. If you, <laughs> if you don't know what you're looking for and you don't have a lot of time, you have a 0% chance of success. Sorry, there's no, that's like, how do I do this with no money or experience? It doesn't work. You have to, if you don't have any money, you need the experience to find the good items and you need the experience of how to list. So you gotta take your time and decide, you know what, I'm gonna get good at mm -hmm. this. Right, so I'm actually gonna shout out our video sponsor right now, which is 1-800-ACCOUNTANT. Um, one thing that is important is you need to get your books and your ducks in a row before you do reselling or any kind of online business, especially now at the new $600 tax rule. So what I'm gonna see happen in the future is that everyone's either gonna be really serious and um, you know they're gonna make two to $10,000 a month profit, or they're just gonna sell a couple of things and not report their taxes. Mm -hmm. Um, so, I, essentially, I encourage you guys to call 1-800-ACCOUNTANT. The first consultation is free. They are going to try to sell you stuff, but that's part of sales. So essentially what I recommend is, if you're going to set up a company, which I don't think you need to do in the beginning, you could pay them for LLC or S Corp setup. Um, but mainly what I want them to do is just pay for the consulting to figure out how to keep your books in order. That's the main thing. Um, right now, they just gave me an example of an Etsy seller doing about 200000 per year. Um, 100 accountant was able to find her $16,000 more, or, I'm sorry, $16,000 in savings on her taxes, and she paid $2,000 over the course of the year in her services. Also, they wanted me to remind you, if you guys need help on the payments, you can ask them for a payment plan. I actually did not know that. So if you don't want to pay their charge up front for the consulting services, I think it's worth it because I think it's like 900 bucks for unlimited tax questions. Um, I would sign up for that and ask as many questions as you can until you understand how your books work and then you can scale your business to any size. Here comes the train. Yep. <laughs> um, Trina says, when writing the headline, can you add great item at the end? You can, um, and it's kind of like cute or fun. It's like putting in a fire emoji, but it doesn't rank. So I would rather you use a word that people might actually search for than great or awesome or free shipping or I'm the best, you're the man, Cinco de Mayo. <laughs> it's, it doesn't really matter. I'd mm -hmm. pick something that actually ranks. James says, Chris, could you share your coupon strategy before your eBay ban? Yeah, definitely. So my coupon was a public and it, I had a public and a private coupon. Um, I actually am creating a dummy eBay account right now. I'm not gonna list anything. I, I'm not going to um, buy anything because eBay told me they don't want me buying or listing anything, so I won't. But I'm gonna create a dummy account so I can at least show the, um, the listing process. I'm not gonna list anything live, but I wanna show you guys the promotions I wanna run, that kind of stuff. So essentially, I did a 20% off public coupon. So always my items are 20% off. It gets people a little bit excited. I think 20% is the minimum because lower than that, people don't care. Mm. Like, has 5% off ever made anybody excited? Not really. Maybe only on like a <laughs> Rolex. Um, so 20% off public coupon. My offer to watcher was 25% or higher. And my private coupon to my existing buyers is 30% or higher because I want that customer to come back. Um, now that also... I've decided to move my bulk purchases 
to um, my, my bulk selling to my own website. So just this morning, I added the dailyrefinement.com, my bulk selling. I will no longer be doing bulk selling on whatnot because their, their shipping changed. So as an example, I'm gonna sell 45 pairs of jeans for $200. It's a little bit over $4. So somebody can buy for a little over $4 per item and sell for 15-ish plus shipping on eBay. So I've moved that to my own website and that's what you can do on eBay. If you're looking long-term, you can pull the email from all your buyers and start emailing them. Hey, if you wanna buy from me directly, you can go to my website. Now, I do not think that's worth it for one by one. It would be worth it business to business. Like if, if you're gonna buy 100 items from me every week, then of course that's worth it. But somebody who bought a random pair of shoes from you and then you email them saying, next week I have an uh, alarm clock, like doesn't matter. And it's only a one-time deal. And running your own website and your own, your own marketing is really expensive. Um, so it's difficult to do that. So now I'm moving everything to my website and I'm gonna market that way. But I recommend everyone think about if you're gonna pick a niche, you do get that opportunity in the future to resell your customer. Um, AKA says, thank you very much, Chris, for your video. Free shipping or charge shipping? What do you recommend? That's a good question. Um, so there's essentially um, three different types of shipping I recommend. I recommend free shipping if your category is very competitive um, and you need every trick in the book because it's very difficult to sell like a hard drive that's brand new, Samsung hard drive, if you don't have everything, best price, white background pictures, free shipping, free returns, um, hundreds of them in stock, um, volume discount, coupon, promoted listings, you need all of that because it's so freaking competitive. Right? So, and you guys know, this is worth writing down, smash the like button right now. 40% of all sales on eBay happen on the first page. So if you don't make it onto the first page, you probably won't sell your item or it will take a long time to sell. So in that scenario, free shipping is gonna help you rank higher. Some people only shop free shipping. They're trained by Amazon. So if you, don't if you charge for shipping, they'll just eliminate your listing. Now here's the thing, most categories and the resale market, which is what I talk about, resale is different. Resale means the item's already been sold. There's less competition, you can charge for shipping. That's, that's my opinion. Um, and then the third version would be calculated shipping for heavy items. So free shipping, if you're selling really competitive, more retail environment. Resale, I recommend you charge a flat rate. Make a couple different buckets, first class, priority, FedEx. So you have three different options for yourself. And then calculated, if you sell only heavy stuff, then I recommend having calculated because like I'm in California, um, shipping to California is way cheaper than shipping to New York City. Um, so just something to consider. And now also one more, one more like advanced tip um, if you live in California like me and you ship to California, you actually pay fees on the tax, okay, which is freaking brutal because tax here is like 10%. So that means you're paying 13, 15% eBay fees on the 10%. So it's like you increase your fees by one, one and a half percent when you sell to a customer in California, which I know all of you out there, you sell a lot of stuff to California because 10% of the people in the country live here. And I think, like, somebody looked this up for me. Is it like 20% of the income of the United States is California? Um, so it's just like, a lot of the money is here, and it sucks because we also have the highest tax rate. Mm -hmm. Yeah, let's switch this way maybe. Okay. Just because of lighting is a little bit weird. Um, there's a question asking if you can recommend a photo box for shoes. Yes, okay, so I recommend a five foot wide, the five foot wide um, <laughs> backdrop. And okay, this is what I recommend, you ready? Um, you, guys should, you guys should PayPal me like five bucks for this because it's really, it's really, really good. I honestly think I have the best shoe pictures. Okay, get a piece of gray outdoor carpet, okay? Home Depot or Lowe's, a gray piece of carpet, okay? Like maybe six feet wide, five feet wide, buy like 10 feet of it. The reason why I say pick outdoor carpet is because it's like stain resistant, water resistant. Um, it's designed to be put on porches, patios. The reason why I pick gray is because gray acts as a gray card, so it's gonna make your photos more accurate. Okay, so I recommend a gray piece of carpet. It's gonna cost you like $20 at Home Depot. Have them cut a couple of them for you so you have a little extra. 
Then, if you want to go all out, get a Lazy Susan that's made out of wood, minus 30 inches in diameter, and that way you can spin the shoe while you're, while you're listing, or sorry, while you're taking photos, and you'll be able to take like um, 11, 12 sets of photos in around 30 seconds, very fast. But I like the contrast between the wood and the gray background, and that's gonna give you the maximum view and super pro tip outside in the shade. So you guys can see right now, this is a perfect environment for taking photos, but right here, <laughs> right here in the sun, too bright. So that photo wouldn't look right. Yeah. You well, they would so just look really harsh. Lots of soft light. Yeah. Uh, let's see. American says, should I take returns with seller paid or buyer paid return cost on used clothing? All right, it's up to you. Um, so <laughs> this is great because there's essentially three different ways to do this. Free returns, seller pays, right? So that means, sorry about that. So that means um, you don't like it for any reason, we let you return it, we pay. Um, buyer pays returns means um, if you don't like it, you pay for the return. Um, that depends on, on how you want to run your business. I recommend free, free returns, you pay for it. That way you get the feedback protection and also you have the opportunity to refund up to 50% of the, the amount in case there's fraud. So you sell a hundred dollar item, somebody wears it to prom, sends it back to you. It's, 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 it's got ketchup stains on it. <laughs> Brutal. Refund them only $50. Use, you know, like you don't get all your money back. Maybe the dress is ruined and worth nothing, but over time it should even out because you can ask eBay, yo, they return this dress and it's covered in ketchup. And if you've done a good job, 99% of the time, they will give you your money back. That's mm -hmm. been my experience. I've been on eBay for forever. I was on eBay forever, at least um, 12 years I was on eBay. Never had any issues with fraud. Okay, so no issue with that. Now, on the extreme version of this, you can offer no returns. And I know plenty of sellers that offer no returns and just do fine. But I recommend if you're gonna go that route, right? You need excellent pictures, excellent pricing, you need to do everything perfectly so the customer can see. So whenever I see the no return sellers, they always are experts in their field. They know exactly where to buy things, who their customer is. That's how you can offer no returns. You've gotta be an expert in the customer experience because you have to make the customer feel like, wow, this is a really legit on the up and up seller that does everything to present the items and they don't offer returns because they put so much effort into it. Um, but if you're gonna just offer one picture and um, okay. one picture and don't do a very good job describing it, you better offer free returns. Um, Tina says, howdy, Chris and team. Thank you for all you do. I have a whatnot question. Yep. Descriptive titles with pics or random titles, no <clears throat> pics, does it matter? Everything matters. <laughs> Stop asking me if things matter. Everything matters. Um, so uh, whatnot I would consider myself still a beginner. Um, I've been on whatnot now for, this, I'm in my ninth week. First two months I did 100,000 the first month, 147,000 the second month. I preload the item in. I enter in the title the best to the best I can and in one picture. It does take extra time. It costs roughly one dollar to do that. To add the item in, um, get it ready for, for, for to, to stream. If I skip that I could definitely run a few more items. Um, but for me, it just depends on how you want to do business. For me, the pre-bidding has not worked. People don't pre-bid. Um, it just doesn't seem to work. People who pre-bid also don't win. It's just so people know what's coming up next and it makes it easier to not make any mistakes during shipping. Mm -hmm. That's the main reason I do it. If you put them in the buy it now, it's 100% worth it because people can just buy. So as you guys watch my whatnot stream mature, you'll see more and more buy it now is happening, which is me using my experience from eBay to put onto the whatnot platform. Essentially what I'm gonna do is give people an extremely good deal in the buy now so that the, the transaction can happen instantly. And also, plug for our whatnot call. We just added one to the mentorship. Fridays at 1 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, all whatnot sellers. So that's gonna be crazy because there's already multiple seven-figure whatnot sellers, including me, in that call. Mm -hmm. So the only downside is that that's usually when I stream so you guys, I may not be in there, but again, I'm still a whatnot beginner. There's still a lot of people in there that are, are killing it. Um, there's a question or a comment. Yep. Um, 
Hi, Chris. Love from Santa Rosa, North Bay. What's up? After creating a listing, does the add custom item specific specifics section help my product be more visible to the buyer? No, don't use the custom. Mm. Save your time. Put up a new listing. You want to use things that people commonly search for. The custom is not people, not something that people commonly use. Oh, someone also was asking, they want to send you some wholesale stuff. How do they do that? Perfect. Email so email you. me first, Chris at dailyrefinement.com. If you have over 500 items, let me know what it looks like. We've gotten, I think already so far, seven people have sent me stuff for me to look through. And um, all seven of them have been great. So just need to make sure that it's going to be over $20 average sale price. It's got to be decent stuff. Um, like, for example, J. Crew is like maybe barely going to make it. Going to be have to be a little bit higher than that to really make sense. Because we're splitting it. Mm -hmm. Aaron says, do you message each customer after a sale with a message about combining the shipping on two plus items or do you use a third party software? Love the channel. Um, so on two or more items, I have the combined shipping in my um, business or my coupon, or I'm sorry, my promotions in eBay. When I did eBay, two or more items sh shipped for $9.99 flat if you pay full price. So what I was trying to do is create buyer habits to come into my store buy 20 items at the same time and not message me ever. I don't want to ever go back and forth with the customer. I want to make my stuff really simple. But in my fine print, I put, if it sells via best offer or, or, what, or offer to watcher, it's $1.99 per item. So $2 more per item for shipping. So essentially, if somebody bought 20 items, then I would go through and charge them $38 shipping on top by combining the whole invoice. That's how I did it. Um, in some scenarios where it's really wonky and they, they checked out in two different transactions, I would just refund them the difference between, um, just refund the difference between what they paid and $1.99 extra per item. It's noisy here. There's the airplane. Yeah. <laughs> Someone was asking, they like your watch. What is your watch? I have an Omega Speedmaster. Thank you. <laughs> uh, let's see. There's a question. It's all good. Can I join the $34.99 Patreon without joining the Daily Mastermind? Yes, all the calls are recorded. So if you can't make the calls, we have 14 niche specific calls. We have, we just added jeans, women's clothing, men's clothing, jewelry. Um, we have the Amazon call, we have the media call. The Amazon call and the media call are, are the most high level calls that we have because the media call and the Amazon call both have like 10 eight figure sellers in it. So that's like the super high level is the media and the Amazon call. Those guys mm. are insane. Brad in the Amazon group has 47 employees. So like that's like level 100 eBay seller, uh, or sorry, level 100 Amazon seller. And at one point he also was on eBay as well, but he moved 100% to Amazon. Um, I do see in the future of eBay, most people will migrate off of eBay eventually. Um, but eBay is a good place from to make zero to 250,000 a year. One more question. As a seller, do you recommend to message the buyer to get feedback or, or do what, or wait? Yeah, yeah. I never message the buyer for anything. Um, yeah. Gotta love the <laughs> train. The train. <laughs> Smash the like button for the train. Um, I never message the buyer for anything because I want to use that time to list more items, mm -hmm. right? So. No feedback is good feedback. After a while, once you have at least 100 feedback, I don't think it matters anymore. Mary says, hello there. What words of advice would you say to a seller who only uses stock photos with their new, with tags, high-end designer clothing? I'm trying to advise a friend, advise a friend why she needs to add her own pics. Okay, you guys ready for this? Stop worrying about other people. <laughs> no, you don't even have enough time in your really short life to take care of yourself. The best thing that you can do for your friend is make a crap load of money on eBay and they watch <laughs> you and they're like, oh, this person is doing really well and they don't use stock photos. They never get a Vero violation and their items never get removed from the brand. You, you don't have time to fix everyone. Why do that when you have so many of your own problems? I have so many problems of my own that a hundred lifetimes I couldn't solve them. So like, I'm not here trying to tell people what sounds a little weird, but I'm not here trying to tell you what to do. I'm just here sharing what has worked for me. And that is what you can do for your friend. 
in the event that you really want to give them advice, just tell them what's working for you. Don't tell them what they're doing wrong. Leanne says, I offer returns, but don't ever have any in the UK. I always message customers, copy and paste. Um, when I post an order, just in, sorry. No, it's okay. I get <laughs> it. Is, okay. So essentially you're, I mean, like Chris gets everything. you're messaging the customer asking, like, thank you for yeah. your purchase, right? Yeah. So in that scenario, I would include a thank you card. If you can, like a digital thank you card. It says something like, um, hold on one second, the car is passing. <laughs> Um, on my thank you card, it says, thank you for supporting small business. And it says, scan this for a super secret good deal. Um, so essentially I'm trying to get them back into my store. So if you are messaging a customer, it's better to say, I have a really good deal for you. Then, um, can you leave me feedback? Because you're just sort of asking, like you're coming to somebody's house and asking them to feed you and you didn't bring anything, bring some wine bring some fruit, bring something that would make them actually want to open the email. Mm. Um, any tips or tricks for improving lighting when taking photos? Yes. So I think the general rule, um, Christine knows more about lighting than me, but more softer lighting is the key to making photos yeah. as good as possible. Also the same type of temperature lighting. Same type of temperature. So lighting. if you have like, yellow light in your house but you also have a very white light it's going to make the colors really weird even if you have a gray background as a gray card so you might want to turn off the yellow light and just have one type of lighting or keep the yellow light turn off the white light so same temperature we struggle with that here when yeah. you guys look at the pictures where i look like a strange color it's because there's two different <laughs> types of lighting and yeah there's daylight coming in there's, there's yellow light in there so yeah, so having correct. different kinds of lighting makes it really strange. Right now, we have one type of lighting, so the, the lighting is pretty good. Yeah, right now we're in daylight, so it's nice, and, and we're in shade, so it's mm -hmm. good. Um, Lisa says, I can't seem to list without weighing, an item, weighing the item. But I think there's a part where you can say you don't know the dimensions and you don't know the weight. Yeah, right? you, you don't have to. You can just leave it blank. And I, I, if it doesn't let you do it blank, what I do, this is kind of secret sauce, so make sure you smash the like button. <laughs> I do 12 by nine by one as the dimensions and one ounce. Mm. I do that because I'm going to re-enter it again when I ship it anyway. Mm. And I'm hoping that if it does get returned, eBay's using the one ounce to charge me. That's just, I, I hope that that works. It probably doesn't though, because they have your account. So when they send it back and it's actually 13 ounces, they can bill you for 13 ounces, even though you put one. Eric is asking, will cash accounting work for a small reseller? I just started out and my trans all my transactions go in and out of one account. Yes. So you can only do one or the other. So once you switch over, you, you got to do that forever. Um, it's complicated to go back to accrual accounting. So I recommend cash accounting for all level resellers up to $25 million per year. And I know I only know five resellers who do more than that. So, um, for 99.99999% of people listening right now, uh, cash accounting. Mm. Leah says, should I use white background photos for just the cover photo or all 12? N don't use any white ba background photos. It takes too much time. Mm. Because and you have to edit it? You have to edit it or you have to edit them to really make them look white. From my experience, it's very difficult. I don't know anyone that has a setup that takes, takes perfect white background photos every time because the color of the item is always different and it messes with it. Mm. Kathy says, hi, Chris. I'm a little late, but happy that I can get in when I did. Thanks for the live chat. I look forward to it. Thanks. Yep. <laughs> every single Monday at around 10 a.m. Let's just go 10, 10, 10, 10 every Monday a.m. <laughs> yeah, it's like a uh, 10 Because we got to adjust. <laughs> so yeah, I want to be, I'm trying to become early guy. <laughs> so today we started the, the stream three seconds before <laughs> Uh, was it three seconds? It was like 30 seconds. Okay, 30 seconds before 10-10. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm trying to become early guy. So that's what's up. Yeah. Um, Paul says, do I need a reseller license? You do not need a reseller license, but it does help you purchase things tax-free. How does that work exactly? You okay, just show so to... you show your tax-exempt reseller license to whoever you're buying from. And essentially they use that number to file with the state saying they didn't charge you sales tax because you're going to collect sales tax when you sell it. Um, that's what that's for. 
Um, Tan says, I currently don't offer returns, but still have consistent sales. Would adding free returns be worth the headache? So um, here's an example, like on Poshmark. My wife won't shop on Poshmark because there's no returns. And she's like, why would I spend money if it doesn't fit and I can't return it? So of course, there are people who only shop free returns because they want the buyer to back their item, right? But again, you don't need free returns. You don't need returns at all to sell on eBay. It just gives the buyer more confidence. And what you want to do, in my opinion, is give the buyer as much confidence as possible to buy from you. Mm -hmm. Let us know any more questions that you guys have. I think we got through most of them, but we? if you have more or if I missed it, then put it back in the chat. So one more plug for the accounting. Um, this video and all of our lives will be sponsored by 1-800-ACCOUNTANT. So if you need help with your accounting, give them a call. The first call is free. They will try to sell you something, but that's their job. So get all your questions in a row for how many accounting questions that you have. Mm -hmm. You can join or call. Don't, you don't have to necessarily pay anything. Get your free mm -hmm. consultation. Get as much out of that as possible. And if you have any questions on that, you can email me at chrisadailyrefinement.com and I can guide you through that service. I currently do, the, do my own taxes, mm -hmm. um, but I learned how to do it from a combination of being in our mentorship group and 1-800-ACCOUNTANT. All the questions. <laughs> More questions? Um, let's see. Do you plan on opening a thrift store? No. Yeah, uh, I think all, not. All the people who have um, told me, okay, you want to know why? Um, essentially, I want to do long-term business with long-term people. That's my new thought. Mm. So if I open a thrift store, right? Um, essentially, there'll be people who donate things like once in a while, mm. right? And people who come to the store who buy things once in a while. Not really trying to do that. Like right now, you guys are watching this YouTube channel because I'm trying to give you information on how to build an online store. I hope that you look to me as a reseller resource forever, right? I want to keep being on trend, learning how different platforms work, trying to become as knowledgeable I can in this field of, of knowledge, right? I want repeat business for a long term. So instead of a thrift store to get people to, to bring stuff to me, I want buyers. I want people who are, and part of the people that I'm picking that are selling me the 500 items at a time is can they do it again? Mm -hmm. I'm looking for people who are professional buyers. So essentially one or two professional buyers is gonna be more stuff that I would, than I would get having a thrift store of random stuff from random people. Hey Chris, how do you feel about buying Gaylords of books? Is that worth going into? Yes. Books. If you, if you want to be a bookseller, it's the only way to do it. Um, what's the best way to learn the best women's clothing brands fast sell through? Uh, let's see. Brands what's the, what's the best through. or fastest? Fast sell through good profit. Wait, what's the first part of the question? What's, what's the best way to learn? Oh, what's the best way? Sell women's clothing for a long time. I mean, that, be, be, be an avid collector. Um, read every single fashion magazine. Be in all, all the fashion trends. Look at sellers like, okay, ha, cheat code. You guys ready? Um, you guys know Ponica, or Monica, Monica the Posh Hanger? I basically went to her eBay store and copied all the brands that she sold. Huge. I looked at all the big consignment shops. What do they, the real real? What do they accept? Mm. They already did the homework for me. I just accept the same things as them. Mm. They're a multi-billion dollar company. Let me just accept the same items as them. So learn from others. Yep. Paul says, I have a problem with uploading photos. Some come through fine, others require the picture to be larger. How do I do that? <sighs> this is like the, the bane <laughs> of so many people's existence. Technical um, difficulties and stuff. So it's, it's difficult. So essentially what you want to do is, um, have an exact process, so I take photos this way, I transfer the photos this way into my computer, however you do it, whether it's a camera or a phone, and then never change it. Every single time you do a software update, add a new program, adjust something, mm. it'll mess up everything. <laughs> and it will take a minimum of a half day to fix it. So get it set up right and then never change it again. Mm. Um, someone was asking, if you did do a thrift store, would you add a thrift store call into your group? Um, yes. Yeah. I mean, we could do that now. Yeah. Um, we, the jewelry call is done by Linda and Linda used to run a brick and mortar. So she, she, she advised me not to do a brick and mortar. Her brick and mortar costs $90,000 a month to run. Mm. Employees, overhead, $20,000 a month rent. Um, she did architectural salvage. So she said she makes more money selling on eBay than she did with her brick and mortar. So 
I'll just follow her advice. Mm -hmm. um. Oh, by the way, a lot of people in our group have a, tech, have a brick and mortar. Um, the partner that I have in the Facebook group, Tekken Sports, he also has a brick and mortar. We can answer any brick and mortar mm -hmm. question. Mm -hmm. Um, do you pay your employees unemployment insurance or is 1099 contractor a better idea? I have both. Mm -hmm. I have both. I have both 1099 workers and W-2 workers. Benefits vary. Mm -hmm. um, Hugo says, in your opinion, thrift stores, thrifty store, are you better? Oh my God. <laughs> right in complete sentences. Uh, better than TJ Maxx or Ross for your inventory. Oh. Are thrift stores... I got it. Than <laughs> so is it better to go to thrift stores or garage sales or flea markets or uh -huh. TJ Maxx, Burlington, Ross? Depends on your model. Um, if you're looking for <laughs> um, last out, so you want to make all the money, I recommend TJ Maxx, Burlington, but you have to wait. You have to be willing to wait until everybody else sells out and then you make all the money. Because if you go to TJ Maxx and buy mm -hmm. 10 things, Every single TJ Maxx got those same 10 things, so mm. the market will temporarily be flooded. Um, Peanut says eBay algorithm tricks? Question mark? Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm not going <laughs> to go into more detail, but um, the algorithm trick is based on your knowledge of your customer. The better you know your customer, the more you know how they search. Mm. And we go over that in our group. Mm -hmm. That's really the secret sauce. That's the secret sauce that's worth millions of dollars. It's made me millions of dollars just figuring out what the customer actually wants versus what I want. Kimberly's asking insertion fees, please. How, how do they work? They charge you when you list an item. So more items you list, more insertion fees. Also, for everybody out there, there's a lot of beginners. Um, we have a no judgment group, so you can ask whatever question you want. But we also have a beginner call Monday through Friday that starts at 7 a.m. Pacific Standard Time after my mastermind call. So I do a call that I answer every question, but, but some people feel uncomfortable. So we have a beginner call that's the next half an hour where you can ask something like, how do I log in? Um, what do I do if I forget my password? Um, you know, mm -hmm. like the really, really basic stuff. Like how do I tell if it's a men's shirt versus a women's shirt? Um, what's vintage? Any of these kind of questions, you can feel free to ask in that, in that group. Mm -hmm. Or anytime, anytime. Um, Timothy says, I'm shipping out an expensive watch today. I'm thinking yep. of skipping the high insurance so nobody sees how expensive it is. What do you think of this, Chris? No, just pay for the insurance. <laughs> um, you There's the alarm. <laughs> alarm, train, and airplane. <laughs> you want me to get it for you? I'll get it. I don't want you to die. I'll get it for you. Wait. <laughs> There's a train. Oh my gosh, it's a train. Will you make sure she doesn't die? Yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> oh my gosh, she just partied so tough. Oh my god. I appreciate you. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Is a question that right. says, how many listings should I do every day if I sell in the everyday category? As many as possible without mistakes. Mm. I think 30, 30 is the limit per day on the everything category before, before you start taking shortcuts and making mistakes. James says, do you have any advice with recycling SKU numbers due to limited inventory storage space? Never recycle numbers ever. Go from, I went from one to a million. You never have to recycle. Yeah, because things will come out and then you consolidate it in yeah. your space anyways. Never, ne never, never recycle. Uh, Mark says, if I'm listing 10 items a day, should I list them all within one hour or schedule them to go live throughout the day? Doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. um, Chris, I appreciate your knowledge. Your tools have helped me be a better and more efficient reseller. I appreciate you. Um, are stock photos good for the main photo? No. <laughs> stock photos are never good and you don't mm -hmm. own them. The, the company owns them and they can take down your listings and it mm -hmm. doesn't matter. If people know what it is, they're going to find it. Mm -hmm. um, do you recommend used or new? Used. I, I am a reseller, so I sell items that have been sold before. I'm not a retailer, so it's different. Sharon says, I have a steady stream of inventory. 
I have 500 items of bread and butter brands I can send you on a regular basis. Yep. But would that be worth it? I'm outside of Chicago. Shipping would be expensive. 500 items would probably cost you around 400 bucks to send to me. So it depends on the quality of the items. So 400 bucks is going to cost like 80 cents to a dollar to ship me something, depending on what it is. Um, so I'm willing to split that cost with the right sellers. So it will only cost you 200 bucks to ship it to me if we split it. Um, and that's not too bad. Mm -hmm. It's worth it if you don't want to list. A lot of people, um, here's the thing, it's, it's going to expose a lot of people who say they're really good buyers and I get their box and I go donate it because it's all garbage. Mm -hmm. So I want to see if people are really actually good at buying and we'll see. Mm. Jay says, hi Chris, if necessary, is it worth listing items with a temporary photo for a couple of days, for example, and Hell still getting no. access to better lighting and background? No. Okay, just wait. <laughs> just wait or use the sun. Sun mm -hmm. is free. So you still sell on eBay? No. no. No, I don't sell or buy on eBay. No. I want to make an account that's called Not Chris, and I, will <laughs> not, and I will not list anything or buy anything, but I want to be able to show the promotions. When did you start paying yourself when you first started? Um, I didn't start paying myself officially until last year. So it took me maybe eight years before I actually took a salary from the company. Do you have any Pokemon experts in the group? Yes, tons of Pokemon experts in the group. Pokemon's actually pretty easy to become an expert in because you can look everything up. Can you recommend a wireless Rolo? No, I don't recommend wireless anything. Yeah. I don't want to replace batteries. I don't want to mess with the network. Um, no, no battery, hashtag no batteries, no wires. I'm sorry, hashtag batteries, hashtag wires. wires. <laughs> Uh, Martin says, Chris, are you still renting cars? And do you, any of your workers have their own eBay store? They all have their own eBay store. And um, I currently don't have any active items or active, car, active cars on GetAround, but Christine and I are going to add one because GetAround is going to pay me to do a mm. video explaining how to do it. So I'm going to put my, one of my cars on there to show you guys how to do it. Nice. At the peak of that, I had 20 cars making... Um, three to four hundred dollars a month. So that was fun, but a, a big headache. A ridiculously big headache. Uh, let's see. Does eBay's algorithm treat items actually listed tomorrow the same as items pre-programmed to start tomorrow regarding consistent listing activity? No, same. And that's so, something, oh, okay. that, that's like totally obscure. <laughs> that, that's not important. Like just get your daily listings up. Don't worry about um, scheduled versus not, it's the same. Can you recommend a shoe inventory system? Yes, exactly like mine. Um, I recommend doing it chronologically, mm -hmm. by time, date, date based. Kimberly says, hi Chris and Christine, working on listings right now, listing a perfume that has many recent comps that are higher priced than retail. Should I price to eBay recent comps prices or just under retail? Um, it depends on how fast you want to sell the item. So market is going to be a better indicator than um, what people are listing it at. So essentially, if, if MSRP is 100, but it's selling at 120, I would list it at 115. Mm. How do you keep track of inventory? Um, we have tons of videos on that, but numerically. So one, two, three, four, five, six, all the way up to a million. Actually, infinity, <laughs> so I don't have to answer the next question. <laughs> From one to infinity. That's how I do it. Mm -hmm. uh, I have a limit of 5K to sell. What do you recommend if you sell out and can't list more and you can't get an increase limit yet? Do you sell out or what? Um, it only took me three months to go from a, um, a 10 item, 1,000 item limit to a $50,000, $8 million limit in just three months because... I had the best metrics you can have. So ship same day, zero returns, zero defects, zero cases. So each time you have that and run out, when you're in the red section of your um, buyer limits, you can just call and they'll raise your limit mm -hmm. as long as you have perfect metrics. Mm -hmm. Oh, thank you for the super chat. Great to see you. I'm in awe of your hustle. Thank big, you, drip. big Drip. What's up? Allison is the best. Everybody <laughs> follow Allison. Hopefully she's doing whatnot, but she's a killer. If you guys only have... She's running all these different things. 
what she does is she goes into the thrift store like a sniper, picks out all these amazing <laughs> things. You need to watch her Instagram. And stuff that you might just pass by, she sells for hundreds of dollars. So Allison knows what's up. She has a different model than me. She's more of a sniper. I'm more of a bulk seller. Mm. So very different. Mm -hmm. um, Little Miss says, I'm a beginner. Should I sell on eBay or Posh or can I do both at the same time? Never sell on Poshmark for any reason. Start on eBay with stuff that you already own. If you're just a beginner, you don't want to waste time learning how to share. It's such a waste of human potential. Learn how to list items on eBay. Uh, Sean says, I've been selling on eBay full time for 22 years. You're by far the most knowledgeable person that has actually taught me something. Appreciate nice. that. Appreciate that. Um, Edward says, does listing a multi of the same item in a listing count toward your listing goal? Hell no. <laughs> No, it's not. In unique, unique, unique listings. listings. Unique listings. No shortcuts. Don says weekly refinement should be the new eBay store. I know, right? Weekly refinement would be really good. Maybe they won't notice. Don. They're going to notice. Uh, See, here's the thing. <laughs> if I don't actually list anything, I don't actually buy anything, maybe they won't, they won't, they won't remove maybe they the won't account. Care. But um, I, think, I think they'll probably still remove it because eBay has these sophisticated algorithms so even though I put in the name as Testy McTesterton, <laughs> uh, I don't know if, you know, if it's going to work or not. <laughs> I think they're going to still find me. Um, Debbie says, I'm selling an eBay, but lately lots of, uh, lately lots of items have no views. Hmm. Yep. So um, no views is a combination of listing items that are not desirable um, at prices that are too high and inconsistent listing. Those are the, that's the formula for doesn't work. So have to consistently list items that are in demand at good prices. If you don't do that, you'll have tons of listings with zero views because mm -hmm. eBay doesn't like that. And we'll take maybe two more questions. Oh, Wait, we'll take, there's a lot. yeah, two more questions is good. Um, Unless you see more that are. are let me, uh, I'll try and pick some good ones then. <clears throat> Well, okay. Here's a question from Bella. Is it true that when you delete an item from eBay due to its selling on another platform, you should not select the reason as no longer available? Does well, that matter? Um, so as you guys know, I run the Facebook group with Tekken Sports and he believes, I mean, this is just like an old wives tale, um, that eBay is spiteful. <laughs> so if you remove an item and say it's no longer available, they're like, they hold it against you like a grudge but it doesn't matter, not a big deal. Does it, you can just remove as many listings as you want. As long as you consistently list items that are in demand at a good price, you'll have no problem. Mm. Sean says, hi Chris, Sean from Tracy. What's up? My 15 year old son is interested in selling Pokemon cards on eBay. Yep. What's the best way to help him with doing eBay so he can learn to make his own income? Thanks. Okay, okay. this is great. So I would say that the number one most important thing, and I wish someone had told me this when I was younger, is that consistency outweighs anything. So if your 15 year old son can get a habit like every single Saturday morning you guys go garage sailing and then um, every single Saturday afternoon you guys list um, 14 items and he lists two items a day scheduled seven days a week and he doesn't really worry about eBay during the week because maybe he has regular school, homework, Sports. soccer practice, mm -hmm. whatever. Um, but if he just has that habit every Saturday, finds a few items, lists 14 items, um, then he'll learn compounding, right? He'll be like, wow, dad, every single week we just do the same thing, but I'm making more and more and more money because he's getting more knowledgeable, faster at listing, knows more brands, knows what's going on. Hopefully he can apply that to every single area of your life because you want to be, I don't want to tell Christine, you know what, um, this week you're not going to get paid or this week there's no videos, this week we're going scuba diving. It's too <laughs> random. But if it's like on, like on a schedule, he could start understanding compounding. I wish I had learned that as a kid. Like, mm -hmm. if you want your kids to excel, all you need to do is give them good habits. Mm -hmm. And I did not know that. So hopefully, um, I can teach my daughter that, like, hopefully she can save 50% of the income that she makes. Hopefully she likes to cook at home. <laughs> um, and hopefully she doesn't take any shortcuts. She's like, okay, I understand. If I want to be a good ballerina, it's going to take a lot of work. If I want to be a good businesswoman, it's going to take a lot of work. If she wants to be a marine biologist, hopefully she doesn't just show up at the Monterey Aquarium. Mm -hmm. She works her way up to that. So my thought is with the 15-year-old since he's under 18, 
He has to use your eBay account. Just get those habits started. Make it fun. Make it so he doesn't, like, don't force your kid to do it. Don't use your kid to get inventory, for God's sake. Uh, I actually got tricked into that. Um, I, I saw this, um, this reseller that um, basically told me his 13-year-old his son was a crazy eBay seller, but he was using his 13-year-old son to get inventory for cheap. So please don't exploit your children like that. Um, this isn't daily exploit, ex exploitation. It's daily refinement. So please don't use your kids to get cheap inventory. Um, just do things the right way on the up and up. Mm -hmm. That's it? Yeah, sure. All right. That's two questions. Thanks. Oh, wait. Was that two? Yeah. All right. Thanks, guys. Thanks we'll see for you next week. Out. Take care. We'll see you next week. Bye. Bye.